The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that many of the occupations that will be in the highest demand in years to come will rely on highly educated workers. Of the 15 occupations projected to grow at least twice as fast as the national average, 10 require an associate degree or higher. We have to develop smart policies to help these talented students who have lived and learned in this country for years, give them access to higher education, and enter the U.S. workforce as legal residents. Now, passage of the DREAM Act will reduce high school dropout rates and enable more students to attend college. The president of the school board is here, Monica Garcia, because she's absolutely committed, as I am, uh, to addressing uh, the dropout crisis uh, in Los Angeles, the dropout crisis in America. We know that at some schools, 65 and 70 percent of our kids are dropping out. When you ask many of these kids why they're dropping out, they'll tell you, what's my incentive to go on uh, to graduate? What's my incentive to get a college education if I can't get a job? Uh, after I get that education. Passage of the DREAM Act will change that. Currently, foreign-born students represent a significant and growing percentage of our student population. I don't know what the exact number of foreign-born students in the schools are. I can tell you that foreign-born residents about 46% of the city. So, you do the math, uh, in all likelihood, the number uh, the vast majority of our, or a good majority of our kids in school today are foreign born. Fortunately for many of these students, though in, immigration status prevents them from attending institutions of higher learning, and thus while contributing to a higher than average high school dropout rate, which costs taxpayers and the economy billions of dollars each year. The DREAM Act would eliminate these barriers for many of these students. The high school graduation requirement in the legislation will provide a powerful incentive for students who might otherwise drop out to stay in school and graduate. The DREAM Act would also dramatically increase the pool of qualified recruits for the U.S. Armed Services. I don't have to tell you that there's a strong tradition of military service in the families. In fact, a large number of immigrants are already serving with pride and honor in our armed services. But the lack of immigration status prevents many who wish to serve from enlisting. The DREAM Act would remove that barrier for many qualified applicants. In a time of war, no matter what you think about that war, armed services need increased numbers. Finally, the DREAM Act is a big step towards our ultimate goal, comprehensive immigration reform. <laughs> The DREAM Act has the potential to grant the pathway to earn citizenship to one million young people. And while this is a good start, we can't forget or ignore the nearly 11 million immigrants that are undocumented, have no viable pathway to legalizing their status. We need comprehensive immigration reform, but the DREAM Act is a great place to start. So, today, I say to the United States Senate, Pass the Dream Act. Yeah. Give our young people a chance to go to college, uh, to enter our workforce, to serve in our military, and importantly, to achieve the American dream. I want to thank you all, and I'll say a few words in Spanish as well. Porque hablamos español, y coreano, y armenio, y muchos otros idiomas. But I'll just do Spanish, since that's the only one I can do. <laughs> Estamos aquí para pedirle al Senado de los Estados Unidos que aprueben la ley de Dream Act. Es una legislación bipartidista que les daría a los jóvenes sobresalientes inmigrantes que se han creado en este país, que han trabajado duro en la escuela y que han buscado la educación universitaria la oportunidad de resolver su situación migratoria y uh, conseguir la ciudadanía. Les daría la oportunidad de lograr el sueño americano. Si se prueba el Dream Act, 
tiene el potencial de darle a más de un millón de jóvenes la oportunidad de buscar este sueño americano. Y mañana el Senado votará y les pido que apruebe este ley. El Dream Act es un gran rendimiento del dinero que ya hemos invertido en estos jóvenes. Y fomenta el crecimiento económico. La producción del Dream Act reducirá los índices de aborto abandono escolar y permitirá a más estudiantes a asistir a la universitaria, la universidad. El PRIMAC también incrementará drásticamente el número de reclutas calificados para las fuerzas, fuerzas armadas de los Estados Unidos. Al mismo tiempo estamos diciendo que queremos empezar con el PRIMAC, queremos uh, legislación que últimamente va a dar a los 12 millones de indocumentados una avenida a la ciudadanía. And with that, I'd like to bring up three young people, um, beginning uh, with Nancy Mesa, Maria Duque, and Michelle Jung, who are going to speak a little bit to what the Dream Act will mean to them. Uh, Give to you one of their petitions, 
also ask you to urge the city attorney um, to, to really valor their acts of civil disobedience as an act of courage um, that has put the GMAC forward um, where it is today. Amen. a couple of things we have in common. We both grew up on the east side. Uh, we went to Rosemont High School. Uh, we went to East LA College. Uh, and we went to UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have in common. She graduated with honors. I did not graduate with honors. Uh, and you paid, uh, we also paid for our own college. Yeah. 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 Why the Green Act uh, is so important and why it makes such common sense. Thank you so much. And now, if I can bring up Maria Duque, who will tell her story. Thank you. 
trabajadores, para que vean que a veces las primeras las tenemos la capacidad de luchar, de trabajar y seguir en la misma a este país.
tell our children, our brilliant, amazing, magnificent children, that there is a place for them and we welcome them. Pass the Dream Act today. Thank you. Well, the former teacher, uh, Unified, Marshall High School, working with many of uh, young people uh, who uh, need the Dream Act, uh, the school board members to around the city of Los Angeles and the state of California and around the nation who are gathering today it is because of your courage that we are here today. It is because you will not give up. It is because of your hope that I am so proud to be an LUFC board member and so proud to stand with you as we call on the Senate to follow your lead and have courage and have hope and pass the DREAM Act tomorrow. You know, the mayor mentioned I was a teacher and counselor at Marshall High School. I was a counselor who had to tell students that even though they had done everything right, even though they had achieved beyond their wildest dreams and our wildest hopes, that they could not go to college. And if it weren't for the leadership of the mayor, who was then the Speaker of the Assembly, we would not have any five boards who have given us, who have given us several of the candidates who have given us leadership on this issue. And the tears that would flow in those conversations were like no other tears that I do as a counselor. But tomorrow, the United States Senate has a chance to make all of those tears of frustration and pain a river of justice. And unless the senators have the courage to look our dreamers in the eye and tell them that there is no place for them, and tell them that even though they have done the right thing, they cannot participate, they need to have the courage to vote with our children, our students, tomorrow. Finally, let me say, as we stand beneath the flags of the state of California and the United States of America in front of this great building dedicated to an amazing trailblazing piece. That 45 years ago this summer, the American president stood in front of the United States Congress as it decided in a different generation another question of access to the voting rights for all people in the United States. And let me paraphrase President Johnson when he said that civil rights and voting rights were not an issue for the people who they were Americans. And let me say today, as the Senate stands poised again to consider access for a new generation, that the issue of the DREAM Act is not a Latino issue, it's not an Asian issue, it's not an Armenian issue, it's not even an immigration issue. The issue of the DREAM Act is fundamentally an American issue. And, the, and these dreamers behind you, these DREAM Act dreamers, are fundamentally American dreamers. I ask every member of the Senate to look inside themselves and look to our history and have the courage to vote.
U.S. Senate, please vote for the DREAM Act. When we look at these young people, there's a sense of history here. Many of my partners have talked about it. Sooner or later, we're going to get this right. The United States is going to get this right like we have other things. But I think for the U.S. Senators that are sitting upon that tomorrow, these young people behind me are only 18 -1. They are only 22 -1. They can't wait for you to get this right five years from now.